Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with gyros. That's right, I'm going to attempt to make what some people call mystery meat, slightly less mysterious. And while we will be taking some of the excitement away that comes from wondering exactly what you're eating, I think we're more than going to make up for that with something that's more wholesome. And I think every bit is delicious. And basically the two ways you can do this is with whole chunks of meat or ground meat, which is what we'll be using today since that's my favorite. Plus, I think this method is a lot easier to pull off in the home kitchen. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our ground meat, which yes, looks like a giant brain, but it's really just a pound of ground beef here on the left. And I'm using the 80-20 lean to fat ratio. And then over here on the right, we have a pound of ground lamb. And while the lean fat percentage wasn't listed, I'm guessing it's about the same. And then besides our ground beef and lamb blend, we're also gonna add a whole bunch of diced onions, as well as a generous amount of crushed garlic, and then we'll go ahead and herb this up with some freshly chopped rosemary, as well as some non-fresh dried oregano. And by the way, even if you have fresh, I do prefer the dry oregano here, as I think the flavor works a little better. And then as far as seasonings go, we're definitely going to need a whole bunch of salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. I'm also going to toss in some ground cumin, as well as some paprika. And then we'll also do a very small pinch of cinnamon. Not too much, be careful but I think a pinch provides a little bit of sweetness in the background. And then we'll finish the seasonings with a few shakes of cayenne pepper, which brings me to the last and maybe most controversial ingredient. I like to sprinkle in a tablespoon or two of fine dry breadcrumb. And if you can, try to get most of it in the bowl. And then once we have all that in there, what we'll do is give this a mix until it's thoroughly combined. And for me, the best tool for this operation is your bare hand or hands. And the reason I mentioned the breadcrumbs might be a little controversial is because they would be considered filler and added for the purpose of stretching the meat, thereby maximizing profits in our possibly unlicensed, unregulated mystery meat street cart. But that's exactly why I added them, since that's the exact texture I'm going for. But of course, if you do want to go pure meat, you could leave them out. I mean, you guys are, after all, the heroes of your gyros. Or if you're into the alternative pronunciation, you could also be the Curtis Blow of what many people call a gyro, which could actually be the right way to say it since there's no such thing as a gyroscope. But either way, like I said, we will mix that very thoroughly with our hand. And then once that's set, what we'll do is transfer that into this baking dish, which I rub very lightly with oil. And I'm also going to lay in this piece of parchment paper, and we will get a little oil on that, and then turn it over and press it in. And that's going to make it a lot easier to lift out of the dish once it's cooled. And we'll go ahead and transfer in that meat and press it down. And by the way, if you're concerned that we're overworking the meat, because we just mixed it so thoroughly with our hand, and now we're working it again as we press it into this dish? Do not worry, that's not a concern here. Okay, we're basically making a bad meatloaf on purpose. And I don't mean bad tasting, I just mean something that's not tender. All right, for the texture of the final product to be exactly what I want, once this is cooked, we want it nice and firm, and not soft and crumbly. So we'll go ahead and transfer our meat in, at which point it's ready to roast. So let's go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes, or until it's nicely browned, it looks a little something like this. And if you're not into going by time and appearances, what we want to shoot for is an internal temp somewhere between 160 and 165. And then all we need to do at this point is let it cool down to room temp, at which point we'll remove it from the dish onto a plate so we can wrap it up and pop it in the fridge. And while it cools, if you want, I guess you could slice a little piece off this side and give it a try. And while it should taste perfectly delicious just like this, keep in mind this is going to get even better when we brown it up in the pan. Which reminds me, a lot of the gyros recipes that use ground meat totally skip that step. Okay, they think you're done at this point. When it comes out of the oven, they say to just slice it and make your sandwiches. But that is not how I gyro. So while I did enjoy this bite, it mostly just made me excited for what's going to happen later. So like I said, we're going to let that cool down, at which point we'll transfer it onto a plate. And thanks to our genius parchment paper trick earlier, we are going to be able to easily lift this out. So we'll grab either side and lift straight up, well, that was unfortunate, so that didn't work. But as you've heard me say before, we never let the food win. So we'll go to plan B and transfer this with a spatula. And I know the paper's still on the bottom. I'll remove it later. I'm too upset now. And then what we'll do is cover that in plastic and transfer it into the fridge until thoroughly chilled. So yes, this is something you can make well ahead of time. And then just keep it in the fridge until you're ready to make sandwiches, which after a couple hours I was. And then what we'll do once that is fully chilled is pull it out, unwrap it, and proceed to slice it up in any shape or size we want. 
And generally, my strategy for this is to make two cuts lengthwise. And then we'll just turn those and cut across into, I don't know, about an eighth inch thick slices. All right? We don't want them too thick or too thin, but somewhere in between. And that's it. Once our gyros meat is cut up, we can move into final production. And for me, that means browning these up in a pan over medium high heat and a little bit of olive oil for maybe two minutes per side or until nicely caramelized. And for me, this is one of the whole keys to the operation. Because while it does taste okay just after baking, once it's chilled and browned up like this, I feel like it gets even more flavorful and I think the texture improves. And by the way, this also simulates the traditional gyros method, where the meat is rotating over the fire. And as that surface cooks, the meat is shaved off and used to make a wrap or sandwich or whatever you're doing. So I really do like this method if you're sans rotisserie, which most of us are. And then once the browning of our meat is complete, we will proceed to final assembly, which is going to start with this homemade Lebanese mountain bread, which I will be showing you since I finally perfected it. I know it looks like a pita, but it's not. It's far superior. And what we'll do is spread that generously with tzatziki sauce. Although I think it's pronounced tzatziki. Who knows? But I do know we have a video for that. And then I also like to do a little bit of shredded romaine, as well as some quartered cherry tomatoes, which are currently the best and sweetest tomatoes available. And then we'll go ahead and place down our meat, which is just so beautiful and fragrant. And then I'm going to finish up with a little bit of pickled red onion, which I will tell you how to make on the blog post. And then last but not least, a little sprinkling of Aleppo pepper. And that's it. That's how I like to build my gyros. And then I should mention there's a very traditional way to roll these up. But my flatbread was a little too small. Plus, I don't know how to do it. So I'm just going to fold mine over and get it up to my mouth like this. And that, my friends, was incredibly delicious and shockingly close to what you may experience from one of the mythical, magical, mystery meat street carts that are generally found in the most dangerous neighborhoods in America's most dangerous cities. And yet, despite that, people will line up because that's just how delicious these are. And by the way, if you love lamb and want to go 100% ground lamb, I've done it that way before and it's very good. But for me, half beef and half lamb makes it just a little bit more mild, and for my taste at least, a little closer to what you get when you order these out. But anyway, that's it. My take on a gyro sandwich. Be sure to stay tuned for the upcoming Lebanese mountain bread video, which is currently my favorite kind of flatbread. Well, actually, forget flatbread. It's probably currently my favorite bread. So stay tuned for the upcoming Lebanese mountain bread video. But regardless of what you serve this on or in, I really do hope you give it a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.